people to do this. All right, here we go. Maybe, oh, wait, there was artwork, I apologize. So first of all, we gotta talk about what the heck is a record book? So at this point, I'm gonna open it up to anyone who wants to toss out in the chat box or unmute themselves. Tell me what is a record book? Whoops, sorry. Kylie, what's happening in the, in the chat? Hold on, wouldn't like a record book be like something that you record process, on, yeah. yeah, the process of the activities that you do and why, yeah, like, no, I'm telling them. <laughs> no, write it down. I'm not, I don't have anything to write it down. I know. What you just said. Oh my God. I don't have anything to write down. That was a great answer. That was a great answer. That's a great answer. Who else can make that? Who else wants to chime in? An awesome reflection activity. Very good. Oh, oh, and the bane of several 4-H families fall. No, 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 no. So if we start with, if we, as we discussed last night, sorry, we're going to reference that a lot this evening. As we discussed last night, the record book is um, an important piece of your 4-H project. Um, so as we mentioned, um, your 4-H project, if when you do your project, you reflect on your project at FAIR, and then really where the rubber meets the road is well, tying all of those learning opportunities together in the record book. So the record book has a couple different pieces um, that it's helping young people keep track of their um, expenses and their incomes. Ms. Swinier says it's a way to summarize everything you did and learned along the way. It's also where you write those goals. Before you even start your project, you're writing your goals in the record book. What I find fascinating is that it is a huge history of your 4-H experience and your 4-H career. Um, I think that is tremendous, is to have all of your 4-H activities in one place recorded. Um, the next piece is why, why do we have to do a record book? And I'm just going to give you answers here. So we're going to do record books, one, because it's an important tool in the learning process of your 4-H project. Also, it's a good practice for responsibility and record keeping. Again, it starts you off on your projects with your goals. You can compare um, where you started as an eight-year-old member to when you're 19 years old, as um, some of our older 4-H members will find. Um, and also, if any of you in your counties, I'm going to put my disclaimer on this, this may not be true in your county. In our county, we use this um, for scholarships. Um, it's a great resource even to build other non-4-H related scholarships from your record book, um, whether they ask for a um, resume, like the State 4-H Foundation scholarships, or if you're applying for something like the Daniels Fund or um, some of the other scholarships that you may encounter when you're a senior, the record book has all of the information you need right in one place. Okay. Oh, okay, ignore this slide. All you need to know is this piece. Are you kidding me? My mother's calling. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all the information we need to pay attention to is that there are eight sections in your record book. That's the only piece of the slide I want you to worry about. Um, so there's eight sections, project learning, that would be your project goals, awards and recognition, leadership, community service, 4-H participation, story or questions, photos and media, and other participation. Oh, hold on. I know, we're looking at the wrong slide. You're just looking at this little piece over here. Right here. I can't zoom in, sorry. Anyway, so when we talk about um, membership, 
we call this the uh, Wyoming 4-H Honors Club. Um, there are three levels of recognition here. There's the membership level, there's the silver recognition level, and then the gold recognition level. Each of those requires different things, and many of those points are based on your points that you earn from, um, excuse me, many of those pieces are based on what you do in your record book. I'm muted, so I can't hear you guys now. Okay, good. No, we can hear you now. <laughs> so the um, State 4-H Honors Club is an achievement and recognition program that members who earn 19 <laughs> points can be um, inducted into. And um, it's the highest achievement that a Wyoming 4-H member can achieve. All right, so I'm going to stop my screen share now. And then I believe Brittany Hamilton is going to share her screen, right? Oh, yes, ma'am. And I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. My name is Brittany Hamilton. I'm the 4-H educator for Weston County in Newcastle in I was one of the several on the team that helped um, check out these new record books. And um, we're going to do a quick run through on how to run the technical side of the record books. And Emily Haver and Megan are both going to be keeping an eye on that chat box for the questions. Um, feel free to ask your question there. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So first thing you'll want to do is go to 4h.dsuite.org. And you'll want to open that in probably a Google Chrome or some other web browser besides Internet Explorer. It does not work in the Internet Explorer. So once we're here, as a new family, and you all will be new families to start with, you're going to go ahead and click sign up and enter all of the wonderful information that um, we usually ask for when we sign up for something new online. And we usually suggest using the same information that um, you use for 4-H online. So it's easy to remember and um, is related to 4-H. So just make sure that you also remember your password and it's gonna ask you to create a pin. And this pin is gonna be pretty important when it comes to accessing the different profiles within the record book. So it's gonna need to be something really easy for you to remember. Maybe like the last four of your phone number or the year you were born or something like that. And then don't forget to click Wyoming as your state. And then you'll click Let's Go. And then that will be the beginning of your new profile for 4-H um, Z Suite record books. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I created a family profile for myself um, just to show you. And so this will be exactly what you guys should see on your screen when you get to this point and sign up for the profile. So this is the primary profiles dashboard. Um, since I'm the one that set up the profile, I am the primary um, person. So the first thing we're gonna do is add all of your household members. So this includes any members of your family that are leaders and any of your family that are just members. And so to do that, you're gonna go over here, this black pane on the left is where you're gonna do a lot of what you need to do. Um, that's where you're gonna find a lot of your tools. So we're gonna click on household members and you just click on add a household member, add their first and last name. My example is gonna be my dog. And you can change them to cool avatars here and he is a club member. We're gonna say he was born today, maybe in 2000 and let's go five. And then you're gonna wanna add a club and this will automatically fill for your county. Um, you wanna choose your county from this drop down menu. So you'll, I'll click Weston County for um, my example, or I guess I could also pick Goshen County, couldn't I, or Washakie, so anyway. 
And then I'm going to click the club that he belongs to. We're going to pick Elk Mountain Outlaws and then add club. And then, voila, I have added this first person and then you click save. And then he shows up here in this list. And you're going to want to do that for all of your household members. That includes your husband or wife or grandma or grandpa if they're part of your immediate family and they are part of 4-H and you want them in here if they're a leader. So now that we've added a household member, we're going to go ahead and add the project record books for that member. So to do that, I am going to go ahead and go back to, I'm going to either go, you can either go back to um, dashboard or you can go over here. I usually go to switch profile. It's up here in the right hand corner. Switch profile. As you can see, now all the members of your family should show up on this screen. If you don't have someone on the screen, um, you'll have to add them and you'll have to go back in to the primary profile to do that. The primary profile is where you can add or subtract any household members. Now, I want to add Baxter's record books, so I'm going to choose his profile. All right, now we're in Baxter's dashboard. So to order, add a record book, we come over here to this black pane again on the left and click on record books. And then it's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to go ahead and click add record book. And the project name. Um, this might vary a little bit by county. I um, usually suggest saying like something like, okay, if it's a if it's an animal project, maybe you want to put market swine. And then don't forget to add your club. That should autofill based on what you added at the beginning of the household members. So that's going to autofill for you. And then the primary category for this particular project is going to be animal science. There are several different categories here, um, expressive arts, healthy living. Um, <clears throat> obviously, a lot of the animals fall under animal science. And then you'll click subcategory and go on down to swine. And then your record book type, intermediate, junior, senior. If Baxter was born in 2005, that probably means he's 15, and that means he's a senior record book. Now the start date and end date, we are suggesting um, that you go ahead and start when the 4-H year starts, and that's October 1st, and it goes until September of this year. We've got some questions in the chat box. Okay. First of all, um, Emily Haver says, um, as a reminder that the primary profile must be an adult. So the primary profile cannot be a young person. And right. you cannot create that primary adult um, is not allowed to have a record book. Um, Hiram wanted to know if you have to choose the category and the subcategory. And Emily responded, yes, you have to choose the categories. They are listed on the State 4-H website if you're not yes. sure about the subcategory and the category. And then I, I just switched over to that to show you guys. Thanks for that reminder. Um, if you have trouble, if you want a little bit more information, you can always go to the State 4-H um, for Wyoming, the Wyoming State 4-H um, website and click on projects. And you'll see here that they are separated into these different categories and you can click on animal science and see all of the projects listed under there. And if you click within them, you'll find the project sheets as well. So thanks for that reminder. That's also a great tool to use. Sorry, go ahead. Anything else in the chat box? Any other, any other questions up to this point? If so, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or you can put it in the chat box. We're about to get into the to the next step. So if you've got questions, now's a good time to ask. Do you guys have something for uh, air sport rifle and the other one that you were just in? And archery. Include that one as well, Brittany. Sure. Okay. So let's go ahead and save 
Market Swine. That'll be his first project and it'll show up here in his list. I'm gonna go ahead and add another record then. And we'll say archery. And again, it's gonna be a little tedious here where you have to enter all that information again, but the primary category for archery, I believe is natural resources education would be your primary category. And your subcategory I think might be, aha, shooting sports. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the same would be true then, Brittany, for like an air rifle or a muzzle loading. All of your disciplines would fit into the shooting sports subcategory? Yes, I believe so. I will double check here real quick. Just make sure there's nothing. Nope, that would be it. So, and that's where the project name is going to become kind of important. Um, your primary and subcategory will sort it in into the right categories, but the project name will help you keep your projects straight. So, and we're going to go ahead and say senior record book again, because again, Baxter's 15 years old. So, and we're going to say that this project began back in October and the end date was going to be this September and we save that record book as well. And then you go on and continue through all of this one child's record books. And if you ever are confused on which child you might be on, you can always check out on the left pane, it will tell you. And then don't forget also, if you guys have any questions on the technical side, not necessarily how to do your record book, but on the computer side of where to find something, there is this wonderful in the right bottom hand corner down here, live chat that they have set up with um, these record books. And that is a beautiful feature of this new system. It makes them super user friendly. These guys are really good at their jobs. They're fast, they're friendly. They don't mind any of the questions you have on the technical side. If you wanna know more about how you should do your record book um, and what, what the sections mean, you'll probably wanna get a hold of your 4-H educator in your county. So just wanted to point that out. <clears throat> Wait, we're gonna pause for the chat box right quick. Just to clarify, your primary profile has to be an adult member of your household. Children cannot be that primary um, account person. Um, they have to be members in the household. They have to be the 4-H club members. Right, so mom or dad need to be the primary profile probably, or the primary guardian in that household. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and add, and I'm switching this up on Emily Haber just a little bit um, from when we ran through this. I'm gonna go ahead and have you guys, show you guys where to add, um, actually no I'm not, I'm gonna continue on, sorry. <laughs> All right, so now we've added all of Baxter's record books. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is how you go about editing those record books <clears throat> for like section one of your record book. So let's go ahead and go into our market swine and to do that, make sure your project is highlighted in yellow. And then as you can see, these options over here on the left switched. And so I'm gonna click on project information and that's where you're gonna add your goals, supplies, expenses, income, all of section one for market swine for Baxter goes here. Um, you're only gonna enter information about market swine. Um, I know that's sometimes confusing for newer families or families in general in my county. Um, and so, um, just make sure that you only enter the one project. If you get confused on which project you're on, check in this left hand um, pane over here and it says market swine in parentheses and then that can help you keep track of what project you're on. And right here, um, I think I'm going to turn over to Amber um, quick and I think she's going to tell us about goals. Is that right, Amber? Or writing smart goals or do you want me to continue and then go back to goals? It's up to you. You can. Um, let's go ahead and talk about goals. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen for right now, Amber, and give it to you. How's that sound? Megan, can you share yours on that spot? 
I just deleted it. <laughs> okay, we'll discuss that. So the most important, so I'm Amber Armejo. I'm the 4-H educator in Washington County. And so one of the most important things about, obviously we have a new format. This is a new platform of how we're doing record books across the state. Um, but the content that we put into our record books is exactly the same. And that, so it's, in, which is the most important part. We're just trying to train you on some of this, but we wanted to highlight on just a couple of the content things that are things that should go into our record book. So when we think about goals as the most important as we get started, it is really what we want to, what do we want to accomplish? Um, so we should be setting those goals now, or maybe you already have set those goals because we're already, what, four months in or something into the new year, five, maybe even six months into the new, into the 4-H year. And so hopefully we have some of those goals set. So as we think about those goals, we want them to be age appropriate. I think when I judge record books, I don't judge them all, but when I look at record books, one of the, mo the things that I write down the most is make our goals age appropriate. Um, because as our goals might look different from an eight to an 18 year old, but we want them to be age appropriate and we want them to be smart. So has anybody ever heard of smart goals? So there that it kind of, it means something. The smart stuff means something. And so when we talk about goals, we want to always try to keep them smart, meaning that the S stands for, Megan just pulled it up on the screen there. The S stands for specific. So we want to know exactly what you want to do. Here in a minute, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about some goals and we're going to look at some goals and some examples of goals. So we want to know exactly what you want to do, specifically what you want to do and what is your goal. We want it to be detailed. We don't want to know, hey, I want to win showmanship. Well, how do you want to do that? Be very specific in what you need to do to make sure that you can achieve that goal. The M stands for measurable. So that means we want to know when you have achieved it. How do we know that you have achieved your goal? Um, so how do you how do you track your progress? How do you figure out and know that you when that goal has been met? Um, and sometimes that might involve numbers that maybe there's a date um, that's attached to it or um, maybe it's a, a dollar amount. I mean, it just depends on what your project is, but we wanted to know how do you know that you have achieved that goal? How do you measure that? The A stands for actionable or obtainable. And so that means that your is your goal reasonable? Like, is this something that you truly, you might have some very big goals and that is great, but we want to make sure that we take them maybe in small chunks that we, um, each year we're setting different goals to get to that end goal that we might have. Um, that it's not, it's not too far out of reach and it's not, um, is, or is it too easy? Um, sometimes maybe, you know, if we've been in the project for five or six years, setting a goal to get a purple ribbon might be something that's maybe not obtainable because, um, you know, as if you've been in the project a few years, you should have some set high, set high, high goals to challenge yourself, but that are also obtainable that you can reach and they're not completely out of reach there. The R stands for realistic or relevant. So that is, is it, is your um, goal, is it reasonable to achieve? Is it worthwhile? Is that really, you know, is that goal something that you really want to work for? Um, so is it really important to you right now? So again, that very much age appropriate um, on the R with that realistic. When we do some review, we're going to play a little chip Jeopardy game at the end, and we're going to go over some of these. So you might want to remember some of these. And then the T, the last one is time bound or timely. When do you want to achieve by? Is it something, it does it, you have a solid time frame? Maybe it's county fair. Maybe it's by the end of the year. Maybe it's in a couple years. That sometimes our goals are bigger. They're longer. They're, they're longer term. We might have some short-term goals and some long-term goals that we want to uh, um, obtain in a couple months or even a, a couple years. What does it look like there? So SMART. We always want our goals to be age appropriate and SMART. So S meaning specific. M is measurable, A is actionable or obtainable, R is realistic or relevant, and T is that timely, time-bound um, goals. 
So I want you, we're going to take just to have a little bit of a quiet time for just a minute. I want you to think of some goals. And if you have a smart goal that you would put into your record book, actually, because I'm going to help you finish or put some things into your new record book that you're going to do. So I want you to either in your chat box or here in a minute, you can unmute yourself and tell us what you come up with with a goal. We're just going to give you a couple minutes because you guys have lots of time to be able to set some of these, but I want some examples. So I'll give you just a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions on any of those before I, you come up, give me some examples? All right, so we'll give a few minutes. I want you to either type in that chat box or unmute yourself and give us some, um, some examples of some goals that you might put into your record book. <laughs> Yeah. Learn how to fit up my goat. Okay. Let's take that one as an example. Learn how to fit up my goat. Is that specific? So you guys can all answer this one. Is it specific? Was that Miles that said that? Yep. All right. So is that specific? Because so we want to kind of learn to fit our goat. So that might be exactly. Uh, what you want to do, but is it measurable? How do you want to achieve that? What do you need to do to make sure that you've achieved that? It would be like properly clean them. Okay. Or wash. Okay. What? So okay. So what might make that actionable or obtainable? How do you have control of that outcome? How are, how are you going to make that, that, um, that it, you, it's a reasonable, do you feel like that is completely, how, how long have you been? This is your first year in GOATS, isn't it, Miles? Yes. Okay, so that would be a pretty reasonable goal. What about realistic? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and what about timely? Yeah. Yes. So when, though, is it in your goal? that it says when you want to is that timely is it in your goals there did you list it in your goals? i got bigger for fair that's what she's saying learn to properly I fit my goat before the fair right so there might so as an example to make that a little more smart if you want to call it that would be I want, so maybe you guys can, uh, does anybody have any more examples that might be able to help Miles with his goal that I want to fit my goat? How can he make that a little more smart? Does anybody know any, have any suggestions for him? There, so somebody put one, learn to better care for my goat, such as nutritional care, because nutrition, that's a great example. I think that's Adeline, is that how you said that maybe? Um, that nutrition has a great big part of how we fit our goat and what our goat's hair coat looks like. And so that might be a perfect example. I want to learn better nutrition so my goat is easier to fit or is, um, uh, yeah. Um, so that I can place better in showmanship during county fair uh, along that line. So that you have those specific measurable things that are inside of that goal. So Megan has an example. I know you guys have put some examples in here. Sew a dress with a bow in the back. So there is, those are good examples, but there might be some things that you can add to those that would, that would make it a little more, um, uh, a, a smart, if you want to, smarter, smart goal. So Megan, can you go ahead and flip to the next thing there? As a couple examples, this might help you guys. So as an example, I want to win showmanship. That's a great goal. It, it's a great goal if it's your first or second or third year in 4-H, a great goal. But to make that a little bit smarter, it could say something like, I want to learn the cuts of my animal so I can better answer, answer questions during the showmanship contest. So we need to know the cuts of our meat or our animal so we can answer that to, to, you know, make a good impression on the judge. So that's an example of one of them. Another one here is, I want to go to State Fair. Well, what do you want to do at State Fair? So as maybe to make that something a little more smarter is like, I want to learn many stitching techniques to be able to sew 
an apron for a fabric and fashion contest to earn a ribbon to qualify for state fair. So you can see that there's that timely because it's state fair. It's very specific on the different types of tech or you know that they want to learn some stitching techniques. It's got, it's very reasonable. It's very obtainable and measurable. And so these are just some examples. And so I want you to think about these and set those goals now because now is the time to be thinking about it. Most record books are due after state fair. We don't want to think backward. We want to think forward thinking and, and try to set those goals now so that we get, um, they're just easier to set when you set them now instead of waiting until the night before record books are due. Any questions about um, SMART goals? So we just practiced a couple right there and you guys wrote some, uh, a few of them there that we can sure work on later if you would like, um, but for time's sake, we're gonna keep moving forward. Um, but those are gonna be ex goals that we can see in your record books um, that where uh, Brittany's gonna now show you how to enter into there. Any questions before we move on or to this point? All right. Thank you, Amber. That was really good to explain what SMART goals are and give us some examples. So thank you for that. Um, so again, we're back in our Market Swine project, um, adding goals. Um, so maybe a learning goal that we could write is by county fair, there's my time. I want to know all the parts of the pig so I can better answer questions and do well in showmanship. That might be an example of a SMART goal, except for I can't spell. <laughs> so there we go. And then what are you planning to do? So describe your plan to accomplish your goal and who's going to help you. This could be like, I plan, try to write in mo the complete sentences and be detailed. So maybe that's going to a showmanship clinic. Maybe that's researching on your own. Maybe that's asking your 4-H educator or your superintendent or a leader to help you that um, your plan on how to accomplish this goal is gonna go right there. And so it, when you're done typing, click save. And your goals and your plan is ready, um, are entered for swine. And the rest of section one are in, is included here as well. So let's go ahead and go to supplies. So this is where you will enter any of your equipment or your, um, your feed or anything that you had on hand before you began your project. Stuff that you did not necessarily have to buy, it, you already had it. So if we click on add supplies, stuff on hand. Let's say that I had a pig water -er on hand and then it's going to ask you where did you get it from. I'm going to say my older brother and how much is it worth. So even if you have some stuff on hand, if you're a returning member you probably have a lot of your equipment that you already bought. That's where this is going to go if you're a brand new member and you're getting some equipment from other people. Um, it's going to go here um, if you already have it in your beginning and then how much is it worth? Um, we got, we really want, um, as part of the learning experience for you guys to see how much it's worth, even if you already have it, even if you didn't have to buy it, you could look back at project records for the equipment that you already have if you're an older member, or you can look at, um, maybe estimates on how much it could have been worth. Um, I'm going to say this pig water probably is worth about $30 and we go ahead and click save and um, a general um, suggestion here is not necessarily um, to bulk your supplies but to go ahead and list them out if you'd like um, that gives whoever's judging your record book a better idea of how much stuff you had and and knows that you understand what this part means. So that's kind of the supplies. And then something else you guys can enter right now, um, probably um, as you begin your projects, is maybe just a little bit of your expenses. 
So I'll just show you these pages. The nice thing about our new record book system is it asks for the same information as the old record books. It just looks a little different, but um, you're not having to collect different information. It's the same and putting it in here is very similar to the old way. So that's exciting. So let's go ahead and add an expense. Type of expense. So it has a drop down menu um, and then an example of supplies might be like pig bats or pig waters or um, shampoo, different things like that. Equipment could be clippers for the pig, um, some, some show equipment um, as well, that could go there as well, and animals. So don't forget, even if you didn't necessarily purchase your animal, maybe mom and dad helped you out there, maybe it was a gift, maybe someone else bought it for you. Don't forget that your initial animal when you start your project is an expense and even if you didn't buy it, we still want you to record that. So that's just a note there. And then feed expenses and other and miscellaneous could be like vet expenses or anything like that. So those are just kind of some of those examples. And I'm gonna go ahead, the first expense that you should probably have with your project maybe is the animal itself. So I'm gonna say that I bought one Camp York um, guilt. And I bought her for $300. And then it's gonna ask you, how'd you get it? This is where you can tell us it was gifted to me by mom and dad, I purchased it, I'm borrowing it from somebody or I traded for it. And the traded for could be something like, I traded mom and dad, some help out on the place or chores for buying my pig. So that's just something to help you um, tell us how did you get this pig. So I'm gonna say I purchased it and then I'm gonna click save. And then I would go ahead and keep adding expenses um, here. And then the same thing for any income that includes jackpots or other shows as well as the sale of that animal. Um, that all goes right here. And then your summary, your project summary, um, is the same as it was, I believe, in the old system. So like, what is something new you learned about? And reflecting on the project experience, how or what will you do differently to improve upon? And then where did you show it? Um, you can say that you showed it at fair, you can say that you showed it to your neighbor. Um, like, not all sharing experiences will have a placing or award. Um, so you could just jump in because yep. we talked about this last night and our new family orientation and some counties, some counties such as Goshen County, if you um, do your project, for example, robotics, William, if you build a robot, um, the best competition for that is not necessarily at County Fair, that's at Showcase Showdown. Another example Cora and Abby and Anna Frederick would be if you have a horse project, maybe your project this year was horse judging. And that also happens at Showcase Showdown. So not every, every project will have a fair showing component on it. And we talked about ways that we can navigate that last night. Thanks. Yeah, that's great. Because the, the end goal is not always county fair or state fair, right? Sometimes you are showing your project more than you actually think. So that's where that kind of um, information, that, that's where this is gonna go. And then you would click save on all of that information. And so if pictures. you were to, can you go, oh, sorry, go back one more time, sorry, perfect. So if your, if the question in the chat box is where would you put your posters for your static project? Right here in this um, exhibit place is where your poster would go, right, Brittany and Emily? Yes, like if it if it was like a um, if it was a poster maybe for Market Swine instead. Yes, that is where this is going to go. Again, this is all part of section one. Um, so say um, I'm going to go back up here to supplies. So instead of a pig and instead of waters and stuff, you're gonna say poster board, computer, um, different things like that for your supplies and then your expenses. Maybe 
you didn't have any. That's another good point um, to point out. Um, let's pretend you didn't have any expenses because you had everything to make your poster. Um, I'm gonna, I think it's gonna, I don't know how other counties would like to handle this, but I know in my county, I always say that even if you have nothing to say, if a page does not apply to you, I always say put NA here so that whoever is judging your record book knows you didn't forget that page or you skipped over it. They know you acknowledged it and they know that um, it just doesn't apply to you. If you put NA or a small like, this doesn't apply to me, or I didn't have an, an, any expenses. Something that tells the judge, this doesn't apply to me. Always do that if you can. <laughs> and then, sorry, that kind of got a little messy there. But anyway, back to summary. Yes, this is where you would put your poster like, I, um, shared this at county fair or I showed it at school or anything like that. So anywhere where you would show it goes here. So then pictures, um, Wait, you can add another question. Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. From the chat box, Emily took a um, good long answer to it, but the question was asked if you breed your own animals, what would you put under animal expenses? Ooh. And then Emily answered beautifully, um, Challenge your 4 H member to think about what went into breeding and raising that animal. And if you and if the child breeds the animal itself, then don't list it as an expense. If the parent breeds breeds the animal and gives it to the child to care for and raise, then it was a gifted. Yes. So let's pretend that you bred your own pig. So, we're going to go ahead and say that it was an animal. Description of that animal might be a hamp pig. And then, of course, you would probably capitalize that. <laughs> and then, cost or value. Um, you could go ahead and put an estimated value there. Um, based on what others might be selling their show hogs for, or maybe you want to do market price as well if you want to actually have a real number um, to go on there. I'm going to go ahead and use that $300. How'd you get it? Um, there's not actually an option that says raised. And that actually, I'm going to write that down and maybe make that suggestion to... The nice thing is that this is great that we're running through this because I can actually talk to our state office and we can talk to the makers of this program and we might be able to add another option for home raised. And that's a really good point. So thanks for bringing that question up. I'm gonna check real quick and make sure it's not something that we could add to supplies maybe. Um, <laughs> I guess you could add it here under supplies because you had the pig. Um, before you started your project, kind of, in the works. So I guess you could add it here if you had to. But um, yeah, so that's the best answer I've got. Other than Emily also answered that very well as well. Oh, and then let's see, we were on pictures. So your project pictures. You can add up to nine pictures with the date and caption that best capture your project. And this little orange box will tell you a little bit more information about that. And remember that this is only your market swine project. We're still only on one project. We haven't switched to the other project yet. So that is where you're going to add your pictures. And all right, so let's say I'm done adding all the information I need for my market swine project. To switch to a different project and add the information for that, you click back to home here and it will take you back to your project list and say now I want to work on archery. Make sure you highlight archery and then click on project information to do the exact same process that we just did with Market Swine for your project for archery and that will look very different. Um, than an animal project most likely. So like your supplies, maybe that's um, your bow, your arrows, your release, things like that. 
expenses. Maybe that is, um, maybe you had to buy your arrows. Maybe you had to buy some new knocks or some new tips, just anything like that for archery. And then income, you might not have any because you probably aren't going to sell your bow. Um, and unless you went to a jackpot shoot or something, you might not have any income here. And that's where you're going to want to put N A. Um, and make sure that that is noted that no, I, I didn't sell anything here. And then if you have a different project, so say you did have your poster, you would list your expenses for the poster and your income for the poster. Um, you would just say poster. Where is it now? Kept. To whom? Myself. <laughs> value. You could um, you could assign a value to it, which you think it's worth, or you could put probably zero just to also say that like I didn't sell this. Um, that'll depend a little on what your educator would like. So and then again, you would say save for everything, and that's kind of how you do your um, projects. Now, some of you are probably wondering, if you've done record books before in Wyoming, where are sections two through eight? Now I'm going to show you how to add that um, to your record books. So we're going to go back here. I'm back here on my record books for Baxter. And the um, sections two through eight is like your leadership, your community service, um, your extra extra outside 4-H activities, your leadership, that kind of thing, sections two through eight. And to add those, you're going to add another record book, and it's going to be called My 4-H Year, oops, is what we call it. And again, you're going to go through this process. So like the sections are not just there, you have to add them as their own record book. So they're really easy to find. It's called My 4-H Year is the primary category, and it's My 4-H Year Involvement. Record book type, it's your involvement report. It automatically fills for you for all of these options. Again, we're gonna start in October and end in September. And click Save. So now, to add my sections two through eight and enter that information, I would have to click on my 4-H year, and now you see these switched over here, and instead of saying project information, it says involvement report, and then you'll click that. And voila, here are all your sections, two through eight. And so this is where you would enter your Wyoming 4-H annual achievement, which Megan touched on in the beginning of why do we do record books. Um, it's to help you earn your points to be in the honors club. And that's explained right here very well. And so you would add the year. Um, you'd probably add last year's, maybe the year before um, here. So year, we're gonna say 2019. And it, it won't let you put a range. Emily and I tried that. It won't let you put year 2018-19. It will only let you put the year um, by itself. So there's that. And then you'll put what you earned and click save. Your 4-H awards and recognition. Remember that this section does not um, include your ribbon placings for your projects. Um, this is only special 4-H awards, so maybe awards that you won at Achievement Day last year, or club awards like Top Fundraiser of the Year, or maybe it's um, some other special 4-H award that you won. Um, outstanding Team Leader. Those are the kind of things that you're wanna gonna put here, wanna gonna, <laughs> you're gonna, going to put here in the 4-H awards and recognition. And a lot of those awards will, um, for most counties, this is a tough one, but for most counties, a lot of those awards, um, whether they're awards for your record books or outstanding team leader, those things will be awarded at achievement day which happens in the fall. And so that's a tricky time because most of the time we're having Achievement Day in November for the previous 4-H year. Um, so 
that's a tricky time, but a lot of those awards that you would put in that section, since it's not related to fair, all of those are gonna go into there. And again, a lot of those are gonna happen at Achievement Day. Right. And some of you, if your Achievement Days are in October before, um, oh, it doesn't really matter yet. It's gonna be after the fact a little bit, so. We've got some right. questions in the chat box. Um, Oh, Emily Haver got that one about ribbons. We're going to talk about where ribbons go here in a minute. Oh, sorry. Ribbon placings go next to your exhibit listing and your project record for that project. Um, are the sections cumulative? That's the word I've been forgetting for two nights in a row now. Yes, sections two through everything else are cumulative, which means that we build on those each year. We don't have to start over each year. Um, is there a way to upload past records or do members need to re-enter the past years? Megan, here's Goshen County's answer. Goshen County, please do not re-enter everything into this. If you're from my county, your what you have for last year is cool. Start new this year. Do not. That would be the same for Washakie. There are several Washakie County kids in here. Yes, yeah, same. I know that was also said for Albany County on their record book training as well, and the same for Weston County. I'm probably going to make that call for Johnson County, and they can meet me up later. What are they going to do? <laughs> What's right. Jimmy Dawson going to do? Come out of retirement? Um, oh. <laughs> um, next Bring up, <laughs> uh, there was one more question. Oh, Sheridan County says, please don't re-enter information. Um, Miss Janet says, so the year will be beginning of the 4-H year and not the year you completed that project. That's a good question. I think it um, you mean like for the honors or like the whole record book or? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what she means. So the year will be the beginning of the 4-H year and not the year you started the project. Since I, um, hmm. I think Since that might be from, is that Janet Benson? Yep. In the year you put in your record book where you had 2019. That's what Janet says. Gotcha. So <clears throat> for your annual achievement, um, that's really, that's hard. Like Emily and I just discovered that you can't put a range there. And so um, I just threw 2019 as an example this year and I was going off of in my brain that that is the year you completed that year. <laughs> so it was last year. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I would think that would be right. So then if for when you put in years for this year, your 20 is going to be like where the majority of your stuff is completed. And so for next year, you'd put 20 because you've already for last year, you've already gotten that at achievement night, you got your whatever your honors club either gold membership or or silver so that would be 19. Right yeah. and I think that the um, honors club is the only one that's a little bit different because for most of these other um, entries that require dates you can actually put a specific date of when you got the award or when you did this or when you did that so I think that's one of the only ones that's a little bit more vague so, so that is 4-H awards and recognition. I know there was a question on where you would put the um, ribbons from FAIR, and I will show you that just as soon as I get through this because I don't want to confuse anybody. I want to stay right here for just a little bit. So moving on to your 4-H leadership. So again, this is where you're going to put your 4-H leadership. And the date, um, you could do the beginning of the 4-H year for some. It just depends on exactly what you're entering. Um, a good example might be um, on October 1st, I was elected 
as the club secretary. And that was a leadership type. And so that's an example of what you could add there for your leadership. Some other things might be group leader at 4-H camp, uh, team leader at 4-H camp. Um, maybe you led a session on beef showmanship or did an art workshop. Um, those are all leadership examples and they would probably go right here. And then moving on to community service. Um, these sections have not changed, so um, they're very similar in the information you've entered in the past is what you'll enter again. So your community service is strictly community service done through 4-H. Um, if you helped your basketball team clean up a road, it's not necessarily going to go here, but if you helped your club, maybe do Valentine's for the um, assisted living in your community. That's what's going to go here. And it would be best to use complete sentences and tell us some details. Don't just say cleaned up the road. Say my club adopted two miles of county road on outside of Osage, Wyoming, and we clean it up every year. You know, be a little more specific. Um, details are great sometimes, and this is an example of where they would be. So um, and then your 4 H participation. Um, again, these have not changed. Your 4 H club opportunities, this is where you would probably put like um, club tours and club fun days, club fundraisers, um, anything within your club that was kind of an activity or an event would go here. And so you would just add your participation, the date, and describe the activity. And then 4 H opportunities, this is on a county level. So these would be the things like workshops that maybe like Amber put on in her county or a different leader put on in your county, or maybe it was county fair because that's on the county level as well. And I would include, I would include the Zoom in the uh, county opportunities myself. Exactly, any trainings that you participated in, anything like that. Um, a lot of your online stuff right now that you're participating in, definitely add this and then state and national 4-H opportunities that's um would this be considered a state opportunity since it's offered across the state megan i would say no i would I, say that's for like showcase a state fair um anything state sponsored okay i would agree with that and i for our families it's a little um questionable right now in these unusual times but ordinarily um this would have been considered a county event so i would keep it that way and in the chat box um emily haver said right now this is a county opportunity please add it to your record book tonight yeah along with the goals that you just set <laughs> yes Yes, everything we're doing tonight, you, it is fair game. There is time to work on it. I would go ahead and add them as well. So the, again, the, yeah, those state and national opportunities are like showcase showdown. Um, maybe uh, the state wool judging and meat judging down in Laramie. And I actually believe there is a drop down. And last weekend, if you did state counselor camp for three nights in a row, that would go there as well. Yeah. As you can see, like some of these are listed. I'm um, gonna see if the camp counselor training's on here. I don't see it. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not, but it does list quite a few of them. Um, and I'm sure that you could um, add that as well with the date and then just do a, a sidebar here and tell us what opportunity you were part of. So, and then don't forget to click save on those. And then my 4-H story. I do not believe at this point that there is a difference between the junior and intermediate and senior 4-H stories. This is the same through them all. I think Emily and I checked that. Um, so instead of the questions, and I don't know if this is an error or if this is just where they wanted everyone to go. Um, this is your 4-H story. You can 
type it in Word if you'd like and copy and paste it into this um, text box or you can write in the box itself. And I don't believe there is a word limit, so tell us all about your 4-H life. And pictures and clippings. So you were able to add nine pictures to your specific project. You are also allowed to add nine pictures of your 4-H year. So if you have pictures of your club doing activities or you doing a demonstration for your club or maybe you're doing a parade um, for your county, just anything that is part of your 4-H involvement, those are the pictures you're gonna wanna add here. And then other, wait, Emily in the chat box, says um, that even though the story prompt is the same for all the age levels, we understand that seniors may want to be more detailed, um, more detailed than a junior and um, may want to write their own story rather than answer a question like the juniors do. And so there, there is that flexibility in my imagination that just because it, this question is, you know, you know, does it have a prompt or no? I guess I can't even read that. Yes, it All says right. describe your forage year. What'd you like? What went well? What'd you learn? What will you apply? What challenges? Why was your year important? And so that would be a helpful, um, that would be helpful um, for a junior, but I know some of the seniors of my county like to kind of have free reign to write about whatever they would like to. And the question in the chat box says, so our parents have to add us to their account. Correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, one last one. So do I understand that the kids add photos to their projects in the project area, 4-H activities um, in the story area? Sorry, you cut out. I saw that, sorry. Um, Hiram says, do I add, do I understand that the kids add photos of their projects in the project area and 4-H activities in the story area? So photos of the project work in the project pages and then 4-H activities in the story in this next section that we're about to start? Yes. Correct. Yep. Okay, so that's pictures and clippings. And then your other participation, which is the last section, is how you're involved in other aspects of your life in your community. So this is where you're gonna tell me, or Megan, or any of the educators or judging committees that I am involved in basketball, church, youth group, um, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, FFA, FBLA, FCCLA, um, any of those activities is where, um, this is where you're going to report them because we know you guys are probably involved in more than just one thing. But if you are just involved in 4-H, bless your heart. I mean, we love you, man. So that's just the, where you would put that information, so. Can you, Brittany, please go back and add, um, show us how to add a photo? Yeah, um, just Thank one you. second. I think my mouse is dying. <laughs> just one sec, I'm sorry. I think my mouse just died. <laughs> This meeting is being recorded. Um, also, while we take this moment to, and Emily's um, in the chat box is leading us through how to add a photo. Um, every, I wanna kind of give a general statement. Every county in our state has a different system or a different format of how they collect record books. Record books are required. Um, and so I would encourage you to check with your club leader or check with your project leader about typically when that is. I can tell you that it's usually in the fall. I know Goshen County tends to be on the later end of the deadline spectrum 
we we like the second Tuesday of the excuse me the third Tuesday of September to have our record books due, but I know others um, like you know Sheridan County. I bet they're probably due on Labor Day because they're crazy like that. And then those pro that process is um, different in every county of how that works. In Goshen County, you have the option to have your record book. Um, judged for competition or you um, can choose not to have it in for competition if you have your record book judged for competition that's how you win those record book awards that we referenced earlier um, and those are handed out at achievement day um, back in the chat box um, we've got a question about if i wanted to watch this since of oh i'm going to email it to some folks so if you want me to email it to you Put your email in the chat box for me, please. And then I'm trying to follow along with Thomas's question. If you do more than one record book, question mark. Okay, we'll keep working on that one. I don't understand that one, so I'll work on that. So I'm going to go ahead and I got my mouse working. So I'm going to go ahead and try to show you guys how to add a photo. It's pretty um, user friendly. So we go ahead and click on add photo and then select a file to upload. You can select an image and I'm going to go ahead and click one. For All right. So, um, so you guys would select an image and it's usually saved on your computer or on a thumb drive or anything like that. And you can click on that and it should upload right here. Don't forget to caption it. And then you would click OK, and voila. Does that help answer your question? I believe so. She says, oh, OK, cool. I get it now. I added some lines, but that's the gist. <laughs> awesome. So that's kind of how you take care of your involvement report, and remember, you can add anything at any time um, as it comes along. It's cumulative, so make sure you add um, those pieces as you go through your 4-H year. Oh, now, here's a cool question. Sorry. Here's a cool question from Thomas. Okay, if you have more than one animal, do you need to do more than one record book? So, Thomas, my question back is, do you mean more than one species of animal or more than one goat? More than one goat. So if you have if you have more than one of the same animal, for example, if you have more than one goat, I Goshen County says that's back to you. It's your choice if you wanted section one, that very first section we talked about. It's up to you if you want to redo that for every goat that you have, or if you wanna put all your goats together. Sometimes it's a lot of the same information, and sometimes it's not, depending on where you get those um, goats. Um, if, obviously, if you have a goat and a pig and a lamb, those are three different record books for section one. So, um, the sections that we're on right now, the 4-H awards and recognition, all of those, of course, are gonna be the same. So I don't know if I did a great job verbalizing that answer. If not, correct me in the chat box.
Is there a photo limit on here, Brittany and Emily? I think up to nine. Just nine photos here in your um, involvement report. And then within your project area specifically, which I'm gonna go ahead and go back to. Um, if everyone's okay here, I'll go back and then we can answer that question on where you put the ribbons from FAIR. Is everybody okay with that? And Emily Haver says, you can upload nine pictures for every project and nine pictures in the involvement report. So you can have a lot of pictures. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna go ahead um, and go back to some of our other projects if everyone's okay here. So we go back to home, my 4-H here, and then my projects are still here. Let's go ahead and click on our market swine. Now to edit it, remember, highlight the project and then go to project information. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to the summary. And if we scroll down here to exhibit, it will ask you date, what did you share or show? So let's go ahead. I'm going to say that on July 29th, oops, this would probably be last year, but um, anyway, uh, what did you share or show? My market pig. Wow. Where? Um, I'm going to say the Goshen County Fair. Ribbon or placing, if applicable. This is where you would put your ribbon placing. So if you got grand champion um, showmanship, or if you got first in your market class and you got a ribbon, this is where it's going to be put. So I'm going to go ahead and say um, second place. Um, market class. I'm going to go ahead and say save. Now, my suggestion to you guys is that um, if you have a market class, you probably also have a showmanship class and I would put them separately. So if I was going to add showmanship as well and I got a ribbon for that, I would add that as a new exhibit. Um, just to keep all the awards separate and you can know exactly what you got for that pig at fair that year. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, educators, but that's how I would want my kids to do it. Emily Haver gave a yes, thumbs up. Same. Amber agreed. Emily Swinier slightly nodded, so Sheridan County must be down with that as well. <laughs> cool. So hopefully that answers our question about where the ribbons for an exhibit go. They go under your specific project summary, which is section one of the old record books. So real quick, um, so let's say that we have completed all of our projects and our 4-H involvement report two parts and it's now fall and we are ready to turn in this record book. Um, it will depend completely on the county on how they want it done. Some of them will want you to print them out and put them in a cover or a three ring binder and turn them in. Cumulative with all of your other project records if you are a returning member and some of you might your educator might want you to submit them electronically this year that's totally up to the county so to do that you're going to um, start with your first project archery and you're going to click print or submit the project voila it's going to put all of your project pages together for you for that specific project and all the information you entered will show up on these pages. I very much recommend like checking over all these pages together and if you see a mistake go back and fix it before you submit it. And then if you're going to submit them electronically 
which only do this if you're instructed by your educator to do so, you would hit submit. And if not, you're going to need to hit download and download this file to your computer or um, a computer and print from that. Um, we're hoping that you will not have the headaches that you used to have possibly with the old PDF system. Um, this will be a little bit newer this year, but we're hoping that um, you won't have near that problem. Brittany, when, it, um, when you choose to do the submit via email, I presume, who, did, who gets that? Remind me, who gets that? Is the club leader gets that or the extension office gets that? I believe it is set up that the extension office gets that because I don't think that they have enabled that club leaders can actually receive that yet. Um, and I think that you would only get it if your email is plugged in. So on your profile, I think you'd have to make sure your email was set up for that, which when Emily and I played with this the other day, I hit submit and I got it to my, um, I didn't get a notification yet, but I also haven't set up my email to be, I haven't enabled that feature yet on my um, county website. So on my county profile, I haven't added the submit option. Hey, thanks. The next question is, I don't know that I understand how many record books can you have? So, as many as you have projects. Does that make sense? So, oh, so where do we turn them by hand? Thomas wants to know. I bet you that varies from county to county, but I. I'm going to take a broad shot and say to the extension office. Yeah. That's at least true in our county. Um, Amanda, yeah. no. Um, Amanda's question is, if you're a senior submitting your record book, do you have to go back and enter all of the past year's information for the cumulative sections? I say no. I want you to leave the past sections just exactly as you have them today. You're and still all, gonna, you're still all gonna of, turn those in though, turn those past ones in, just yes. as this is this year's stuff. Yes, and everything from this year, start putting it into this system. Don't, please don't go back and redo everything. That's not what this is about. Right. And, and Emily had a, Go ahead. Oops. Emily Haber says um, most counties will ask that you input this this year's info and include your old record books for reference. Um, let's see. Adeline says, is there a limit to how many animals you can submit in the record book? You should only do a record for the animals for the projects in which you are enrolled. Yes. Um, so if you are not enrolled in the Market Swine Project, please don't do a, a record for the Market Swine Project. Oh uh, gosh, oh got quick. Um, Hiram says that Johnson County will have to discuss our submission plan this year. Adeline says, okay. And then can we have more than one record book? For a specific project or in general? Not sure. Anthony, if you can, can you unmute and ask that one? In general? In general, tell me what you mean, bud. Uh, if you have um, like just pigs and you have more than nine uh, pictures, can you have more than nine and put them in the other record book? 
No. Okay. okay. If you have um, nine pictures that you want to add of your swine, you can add nine pictures. And we ask that you try to limit it to that um, and then leave the other section for 4-H activities. But you can keep those pictures, you know, and enjoy them for as many years as you want. We just don't ask for them in your record book. Um, next question is, I've got a question about the project name. Do we need a different record book for each project? Example, if you create more than one quilt. Tricky, tricky. Tricky, tricky. And I don't know where the Martin family's at. <coughs> because in, um, oh, they're from Fremont County. Well, I'll be. That's unrelated, but that's a good thing. Because you were on last night, weren't you? I've sent your name all, all over the state. Anyway, trying to figure out where you're from. Would the answer to that be that you could combine those expenses if you had two quilts? Or like Brittany said earlier, that you can just add another project for that, right? But I think it'd be, I don't know, that's a tough one. What do Personally, you I, um, if I was doing the quilting project, I would just say quilt as quilting as my project name. And I would probably combine those two quilts into one project record book if I was learning this same kind of skills for that. And even if I wasn't, it's still the quilting project. So and you can I add probably, expenses for them, right? Yes. And so if the and here's Megan's answer because I alluded to that in Goshen County the other a couple minutes ago, um, I personally like to see if you're doing three um, breeding meat goats, sometimes we want, we have different goal, goals for each of those meat goats. And so it's the same thing. If you have um, different goals for each of the quilts that you make, then I think it's okay to do two record book front ends. So I'm just being squirrely, but I think overall, it's what makes sense in your mind, what makes sense to you. Absolutely. If you want to go the extra step and include two record books for quilting, by all means, go for it, especially if they taught you different things or you just, yeah, you're like Megan said, goals were different and everything. So real quick, I'm going to go back over here to home, like archery. So you would print off archery. Now you have to go back and you have to print off market swine. And so you'd go to print and submit market swine and the same thing for my 4-H year. Don't forget to print off each record book. Um, and then I know we had a question quite a while ago, I think from Carrie, um, asking if there were blank templates to print off that kids could fill out and type into this system later. Yes, there are. And here they are in view blank project. So you can print these off. You'd have to download them and print them off, but you definitely have that option still. And that's really great, especially for our younger members. And then Megan, I have a question for you in your county. Um, for your younger members um, who may not have um, the computer skills to do their record book. Do you accept handwritten um, record books or do you suggest that a parent help them or how do you like to handle that in your county? And Amber, it since this is... Seems as though that's been a debate for a long time and um, Goshen County really loves handwritten things, especially for those little little folks that's um, harder for them to type. We sure do love handwritten things all the time. So we would not be opposed um, to accepting handwritten record books. 
And in Washtiki County, we would take either. Uh, you don't get more points for hand or, or for type, so it's either. Same, I would agree. Is One is not better than the other. We take them, we just like that they're done. I'll be honest, we love them when they're done. And our county is the same. So I was just curious. Um, so if you guys were wondering that question, um, there's your answer for that. Um, and I think that pretty well covers the system and where to find all of the pieces. Um, does anyone have any other questions? We have a quick little um, Jeopardy review game if you guys wanna stay on after we answer all the questions. There's been lots of good questions. Great questions. Yeah. And then Emily, if I forgot anything, be sure to remind me <laughs> if you would. <laughs> no, it's a good. Okay, thank you. Well, if you let, can I share my screen? Sure. You wanna go, are we ready to review? Megan? Okay, we're going to go. Yes. Okay. All right. So the hard part about this online learning is trying to keep things. Um, uh, I can't go away. Uh, hands on and um, interactive. So I suppose you can see all those pictures. So I have a fun. So you guys are going to have to watch the chat box. I only have one screen tonight. So you're going to have to watch the chat box and help me. But I want you guys to be interactive and we're going to do, I have like 15 questions to do um, some review of some things that we just learned to kind of wrap it all up. So chat if you can, or if you can say it out loud, we're not, we, um, I, we're not going to keep score or anything, but um, say it out loud, be interactive. These are, and we're going to play Jeopardy. So this is on 4-H record books. Any questions before we start? If somebody could definitely watch the chat box because I can't see it. All and right. Kylie and Kylie and Megan have been on it all night. Okay. Good deal. You're going to have to keep on it. Okay. So can, our can categories are record book. Hold on. Make sure everybody can see the screen. I can only see three of the main columns. Really? I don't know how to change that or fix that. I can that. see them all. Oh, okay. Maybe my screen's weird, so. We there can see them all over. Oh, What's there that? we go. Now I can see it all. Thanks. No, no. All right, so the re the categories are record books are fun, right? Because record books are fun, right? Okay, so I'm just going to randomly pick, and I, I didn't even look at that, but I know one person that's, I hope they still on. So we're going to let Miles pick the first category, because I know he's on. Miles, pick the first category. Books. Books for how many? 20. 20. All right. Record books for 20. And the question is, a good goal is smart. What does the A stand for? Miles, or anybody in that? Attainable. Attainable. Very good. Yeah. Or actionable. Very good. Megan, can you quickly get somebody, after I'm done with these questions, quickly get somebody to do the next one? William Knowlton. Say it again. William Knowlton. Pick a next category, William. Uh, record. Record for how much? 20. 20. Records for 20. When should you write your goals for each project? Before you start the project. Yes, very good. At the beginning, as soon as you get your record book or when you get your project. Very good. Next category, Megan. Roxy Lee Powell and dot, dot, dot. Gussie. Gussie. What's the next category? Five, 20. Fun for 20. So how many pictures? Can you submit? Nine. Nine. Good job. Remember, it's nine for the project and nine um, for your involvement report. Very good. 
Next category. Alan Tenna Jr. Um, R for 20. R for 20. We're all about the 20s. We are in the 20s now. What's the primary category for your 4-H involvement report? Does anybody know? Five. Awards Four. and recognition. Oh, no. Nope. Anybody else? Remember the primary category is like the project area it would fall project under. Project reports. Simil, yep. The your 4-H year, your 4-H year enroll involvement. So that was pretty close. I, I don't know if he said that. Maybe Miles is sound like him. I'm not real sure. Next category. The Teeters family, but they're listed as Mandy's iPad. <laughs> Record. Record for 10. Record for 10. Record for 10. The project plan should include what type of information? All of your animals. And what you do. Pretty, yep. Pretty close. So what did, what is your plan to accomplish that and how to accomplish your goals? Well, who are you going to ask for help? What equipment do you have on hand? Those types of things. Good job. Next category. Cora, Abby, and Anna. Fun for 40. Fun for That's 40. Abby. Go big. Is it okay to be creative and use tabs or simple dividers for each section and use a three ring binder? Yes. 100% yes. 100% yes. It helps thing, keep things organized and it's easier for judging if you turn it that way. Very good. Next category. How about Anthony Tenna? Fun for 10. Fun for 10. Should you keep your previous year's information in your record book? Yes. Yes. Yes, it shows improvement. In Washtenaw County, we give points for improvement. Very good. Next category. How about the those Shimmick kids, Caitlin and Carter? Hold on just a second. The, my service isn't quite good, so. So you want to pick some? Can we just go ahead and pass? Well, I can we'll just give you fun for 30, how about? <laughs> a good goal is smart. What does the M stand for? Anybody can answer though. Measurable. What does the M stand for in SMART? Measure. Measurable. Very good. How, when, what, how can we measure our goal? Next category. Martin family from Fremont County. My family just left me. It's just mom. Okay, we'll give you record for 30 that anybody can answer. Should you leave the fields blank in the Z Suite record book? No. 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 Very good. Remember, like, write no, no, no. in A if um, you don't have anything to put there. Next category. They keep wiggling on me. Stephanie's iPhone. <coughs> I know Stephanie, I don't know if the kids are there or not. Ten. We'll give you books for 10. Should we keep good, we should keep good records because, why? Tell me why. Anybody? It's important for improvement? Oh, very good. It's fun to keep records, right? It shows development, and my mom said we should do it, and our 4-H lawyer said we should do it. So all of the above. Very good. All right. Next category. Uh, Bochi family. The numbers in green. Books for 30. All right. If my mom does my 4-H record book, will she win the prize? No. 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 No, not. So you as a 4 h -er should be doing the record book because the only person hurting if mom does it is you as the 4-H member. 
You are, need to learn those things. All right, next category. Amy's iPhone. Pick one. R10. R ten. R for ten. A good goal is smart. What does the R stand for? Recognition. Oh no no. Mm. Realistic. Recordable. Realistic. Realistic or relevant. Uh. Next category. <laughs> <laughs> About Ashlea Bassett? It's only four more. How about we'll give him record for 40? There's only a couple left. A good okay. goal is what does the S stand for? Suspicious. Suspicious. <laughs> Specific. Yeah. That's a hard word to say this time of night. Specific. Very good. Exactly what you want. Next category. Three left. I'll just click on them if that's okay. This is R for 30. Where should you go if you have questions about how to use the technology in Z Suite? Uh, <gasps> extension office. Oh, Five so chat. Yeah. The help box. The help box. There is an online chat in the lower right hand corner that they can help you right there. Very good. Wait. All right. We have two left. Books for 40. Is the Z, Z Suite Junior Record Book different from the Z Suite Intermediate or Senior Record Book? No. 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 no they are the same. Very good. And the last question is. Can you print out a blank record book? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. So you can handwrite it if you would like to. All right. That is the end of our little review. Does anybody have any questions? Tonight. Am I on You guys have been paying attention and look very good on. Oh, sorry, Amber, I muted you when I was muting everybody. Oh, I've seen that. That's okay. You guys did a great job reviewing. You guys paid attention. I know we've kept you way longer than I think we anticipated. So thank you guys for coming on tonight and learning. Hopefully you learned something. I know since we've been...